First of all, you are doing very well. Uh, you know, I hope I'm audible also. Uh, so if I'm audible, great. Uh, so just one sec, you know, I was trying to set up. That is why there was a delay. Uh, I, I didn't realize that it started. Now, please, uh, you know, note one thing. The paper broadly is fairly easy. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I think that... Uh, first of all, you are doing very well. Uh, and I think that, you know, students would have done well. But there are some tricky questions. I am going to review only the... MCQ part, I'm not going to go through other parts because it will take time for me. On an overall basis, it looks easy. There may be some uh, questions students were saying that, you know, the EBA, they got negative and all. I have to go through it. I haven't had time to go through it. So let us get to the answers. Let's not waste first time. Uh, uh, and please note, uh, some answers may be incorrect. Uh, you know, given that I have also solved it in last half an hour, only I got it only half an hour ago and I was trying to do it quickly. Uh, but 99%, I guess the answers are right. One or two, if they are incorrect, please uh, let me know and I'll more than happy to go through and get back. Now, uh, for the first question, uh, answer is D. No hedge will give you the best uh, result because in no hedge, you'll get 0 0.805 as the rate as compared to you know other cases where you'll get different rates. Uh, this is first one. The second one, it is 15.88. Now, this is a tricky question. Uh, a lot of students might have made mistakes. Uh, so what will happen is when you're looking at an option, right? This is that they're saying what will be the expected value of option. So you have to come back and first figure out whether it is a put or call. So you'll figure out it is put. And in put, you have to see under each of these three circumstances, whether you'll exercise it or not. So you'll exercise it only in these two scenarios. Uh, so you'll not exercise it in these two scenarios because the market rate is uh, higher. You'll exercise it here. And in the second case also, whether you exercise or don't exercise doesn't matter. So you have to consider this and under each circumstance, what is the money that you will uh, receive? And then you have to adjust for the premium and then you will get 15.88 as the answer. Then uh, forward hedge is 15.82. It is fairly simple. Uh, the rate that is applicable here is, uh, uh, you know, spot rate, uh, the forward rate 7.791. Then here it will be 0 0.805, which is uh, expected spot at the end of six months. Basically, it is a simple uh, you know probability multiplied with these uh, rates for uh, expected future rates so you'll get 0.805 then okay then come to case scenario 2 in case scenario 2 you have to first figure out uh, you know what is uh, market covariance and in fact uh, market covariance also will be same as uh, uh, market variance i'm sorry market variance will also be same as 125.4 only after you figure that out you'll be able to answer other questions and then beta is equal to covariance by market variance so you will get uh, for fifth question uh, for 8.9785 and 9% as required return of A and B. This is answer B. And uh, students, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe, do, please do share. Most of the questions are from our uh, material is what I can see, uh, what we have taught in class as well. So, you know, uh, uh, please note that. Uh, then coming to point six, uh, question six, uh, the because these have uh, 8.975 and 9% is the required returns, which is basically based on cap M and then you multiply this probability with the return and get the other returns, which is the expected return. You'll realize that, uh, you know, uh, A has negative alpha, whereas B has positive alpha. So the answer is C there. Then coming to qu next question, which is uh, expected rate of return. Basically, these are the numbers 7.7 .7 and 10. So for computing question six, you have to basically compute question seven. And the variance of the market value, this is actually the first thing that you'll compute before you compute anything else. So that is actually question number eight. Okay, then what will be the beta? You know, this also again, the answer is C. If you only when you compute the market variance, you'll get the beta. So nine will actually follow eight. So this is the uh, answer is C. This is not an issue. Then coming to case scenario three, which is on mutual funds. Now, this also is a fairly simple one. I don't know why they asked it. What is gross value is A, which is 420.2 lakhs. Very simple. Then uh, net value is from 420, you subtract the, you know, accrued expenses and uh, the uh, other liabilities, whatever are there, you will get uh, 415. You will get 415 point something seven. Then divide that by 20 lakh units, you will get 20.785. So the answer is C here. Answer is C here. Okay. So this is one. Then uh, moving forward, case in F4. Now, this is actually, I didn't like this case study. It was, uh, I don't know, uh, some of you must have felt it. It was very poorly drafted. I mean, uh, answers are not exactly, you know, available, then uh, you don't have, uh, uh, you know, full information given. It is very pretty twisted. So I just want to share one screen of my Excel sheet where I've done this. Just one second, I'm sharing this.
So I hope this is visible. So the first part, uh, you know, you had 21.6 lakhs of uh, portfolio. And uh, for that, uh, the key question a lot of students will have is whether I should divide it by or whether the future value of the uh, Nifty should be considered or spot value. It is actually future value. Please go and check uh, portfolio management question number 11, study material. It is always future value. Uh, so you multiply by this and get 5.06 contracts. Now the question is whether we should consider five contracts or whether we should consider six contracts. And now in some questions, in same question number 11, portfolio, uh, portfolio management, or whatever, say, not portfolio management, any derivative chapter, uh, they have considered either five or six you can take. They have, I think 13, 14 is the answer. So they take both. So, but here, uh, what happens is uh, in uh, this question, uh, the answers are not accurate. So when you have futures price, and uh, spot is going down by 10%. Uh, ideally, the future also should uh, go down by 10%. But that is how normally it works. So you can take that and work out. And if you work that out, whether you take six units, or six contracts or five contracts is the key question. Now, if you take six, you get one answer. If you take five, you get another answer. Now, but eventually what is happening is I have considered six because that is where the answers are closest. So I'm getting 80,000 and minus 64. So just coming back to my, uh, you know, uh, other screen where I have the, uh, you know, iPad where the question paper is visible. Just one sec. When the question paper is visible, so you see whether it is five or six. It is five point zero six. The students will get confused whether they should mark it for five or whether they should mark it for six. Uh, you, I think we should mark it for six. And if you mark it for six, you will get a net gain of ninety thousand. Actually, if you look at my Excel sheet working, I got a gain of eighty thousand. So this is the closest, which is why I marked as a gain of ninety thousand. And fifteen, uh, I marked it as uh, you know a loss of ninety thousand because I actually got a loss of sixty four thousand or something. Okay. Uh, so now this is the answer. Uh, these last question, no, is I didn't like the question at all because it is purposely they've confused it. So these are the answers. Uh, again, I'm repeating question number uh, uh, one. This is I don't know. I think which set I don't know. But uh, this forex may one is D, two is C, fifteen point eight eight, three is D, fifteen point eight two, four is B, point eight zero five by sixteen point one. Then uh, Case scenario five is uh, sorry. Case scenario two B is, uh, you know, uh, just a sec. Voice issue. Yeah, my voice is not audible. Somebody saying voice is not audible. I think it is audible. I'm able, I was able to hear it. Anyway, uh, five is B, six is C, seven is C, eight is D, nine is C. Then uh, this uh, gross value of the scheme, 420A. Then uh, net is 415C. Uh, then NAV of the star scheme is 20.785C. Uh, then case scenario four, which is a twisted one. I think answer could be D where you sell futures. Then uh, six, six futures, sell six futures. 14 is a net gain of 90,000, answer D. And 15 is net loss of 90,000, answer B. So this is the solution that I have. Uh, I'll be sharing more details uh, shortly uh, of the full uh, question. Uh, and I'll uh, you know uh, be sharing more details. If there is any error or anything, I'll just go through and then I'll come back. But as of now, I couldn't find anything. Okay, chalo guys, then all the very best. Please prepare for your audit exam. Uh, jo ho don't bother about this. Whatever is done is done. Uh, I will be uploading a PDF of the solutions for this as well as the full chapter, everything. Okay. Chalo then, see you guys. Bye. All the very best and do well.